The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day after the market close. Tom takes your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time. Let's go to a Bill in Boca Raton. Hey, Bill, what's going on? Not too much. Enjoying the warm weather in Florida just like you, except on the other coast. Perfect, man. Perfect. Yep. Do you listen on the Internet right now? Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. No, I, I enjoy that. That's in your Tiger TV and everything. I've been watching you for years, and you've really taken this whole programming to a level that's just phenomenal. I appreciate it. And now, here's Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go two hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone had a great weekend, safe weekend. Uh, let's make it a great week, folks. Look forward uh, to being uh, back with you. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Surrender and let go of the past. Whatever life takes away from you, let it go. When you surrender and let go of the past, you allow yourself to be fully in the moment. Letting go of the past means that you can enjoy the dream that is happening right here, right now. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow down 88, NASDAQ off 16, S&P's off 7.5, gold contract up $11.60, trading to $1,613 an ounce. Silver up 16 cents at $40.29 an ounce, platinum. Down five dollars at one thousand seven eighty nine an ounce. Copper flat at four forty a pound. Light sweet crude down seventy four cents, trading out at ninety nine dollars and thirteen cents. Bonds down twenty four ticks at one twenty five oh three. Dollar index down nine ticks at seventy four thirty two. Euro up twelve at one forty three, and the yen down twenty two, trading out at seventy eight thirty two. Our phone number is eight seven seven. Nine two seven six six four eight. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S and P's, let's take a look at them. What do you have? We are at thirteen thirty seven four three. Now, what we did out here today, folks. Is this? You back down. You had lighter volume. Rejected the lower price in the S and P, which is thirteen thirty one of the cash. We did seven hundred and sixty three million shares going into nine. 69 from last Friday. What does that set up? That sets up two separate areas. It sets up that 1356 number wants to get hit again on the S&P cash. That's how I'm looking at that at this particular point. That's the swing point from the 7th of July. Now it didn't have it certainly did it hasn't been able to handle it at the highs also. We have a huge trading range. The trading range we're in, folks, is approximately, well, it is 112-point S&P trade range. It's a trader's paradise. That's the bottom line. So that's your S&P. We go over to the Dow Industrials. You take a look at the Dow. What you have with the Dow is the same type of setup. The range in the Dow uh, is even bigger. The range is a 1,000-point range in the Dow. So what does the Dow do today? Dow gets under the lows of uh, last Thursday, which was 12,566, rejects them, has light of volume. What does that put? That puts game 12,573 is on the agenda again. And the last high inside that Dow was the 12,876. Now, we go over to the NASDAQ. We take a look at the NASDAQ. This is where it's going to get really interesting, and this is what it is. NASDAQ composite today, folks, was down 16. You had a sideways move, however. What we did is this. You had a highs out there of 28.59. You had lows of 2828. You did 1.6 billion. The 1.6 billion again was going into 2.3 billion. So what that's saying is that flat out it wants to go up there and try to test out the 2878 once once again. That 2878 is also the highs of the 7th of July. The actual high inside the NASDAQ is out there, 2887. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? Let's go to the world of bonds. World of bonds out here, if we take this 30-year bond, folks, this is what you have happening. Now, of course, when we take, well, well, first off, let's, let's take a look at the 30-year. 30 30-year 30 bond, it hit a high on the 12th. 12th of July, it gets up there to 127.15. It does 444,000 contracts. 
The little baby pulls back down today with what? With light of volume. So it's going to get intriguing here because you, you come down into 124.24. I suspect this is going to still try to get down into the 122.05 area, and this is the range that's happening inside the bonds. You know, you have a trading range there, too. The lower part of that is the 122. The higher part is that 127. Now, over to the dollar. The dollar index, of course, has been holding up. You know, the whole world figures the dollar is done. Well, it's not even close to being done. Um, bottom line is that the dollar has already hit its lows, folks. The dollar hit its lows a few years ago. We're at 74.31 right now. We came off the lows, the bottom, on the 5th of May. That was 73.50. As we come off that area, what you had is that you had an acceleration, strength, volume, you had it all. We hit highs in the dollar the 12th of July at 77.17. We hit that baby out there with 49,000 contracts. We're pulling back today with 17,000. What you have with the dollar, bottom line, is that it's in a consolidation, but the highs of the dollar, it's in the lower end of consolidation right now. The top end of that right now is 77.17. I expect what you're going to see is that you're going to see it get into more than likely the 80 mark. Now, of course, with all the rhetoric that's going on with all our great politicians in Washington, D.C., it is an absolute joke, you know, that they, bottom line, uh, they're, gonna, they're, they're playing with uh, all our livelihoods in, in a huge way. You know, will it get straightened out? Yeah, I suspect it will get straightened out. Will will it go down to the very last tick? Yeah, it will. Do they care what happens to any of us? No, they don't. The quicker you get that straight in your own head, folks, the better off you're going to be. Let's go over to the gold contract. We take a look at the gold contract. What do you have out here with gold today? Gold gets to an all-time high, $1,624. This is on the future contract. What we had, um, this little baby... Extended, yes. Uh, it's over the 1577, has light of volume, has the whole ball of wax. Uh, what you'll see is when the dollar goes up, you're going to see gold pull back. Uh, what is absolutely, uh, you know, has been and has been for quite a while is a real disconnect. No doubt, as you look at the XAU, the HUI, the equities themselves of yelling, screaming, doing all of the above, uh, that they just can't make it up to those highs. And that's a big heads up, folks. Now, I don't expect, uh, you know, devastation out here, but I expect what you're going to see, um, you know, you're going to see uh, some pullbacks that are going to be slightly nasty inside that commodity market. Let's go over and take a look at uh, Netflix, NFLX. Uh, Netflix uh, just come out with numbers. Netflix closed at uh, 281. It's trading at 259 right now, so uh, you're down uh, 60. We're down 21 points. If we actually take a look at, on uh, Netflix, what you have is that, uh, yeah, she's gonna, she wants to trade back to uh, 242. Uh, Numbers-wise, go like this. The uh, earnings per share, the estimate was $1.12. The earnings per share was $1.26. Uh, so the bottom line is that the, the second quarter, they did make uh, the number in a big way. Uh, third quarter sale, they're saying profit outlook is shot um, of the estimates. So uh, we'll, we'll see what type of uh, shortness they figure they, they may come up with. Some of the high-volume stocks we had out here today, you had Cisco down 18, uh, HCA uh, Holdings was down 664, that's a hospital company. Apple was up 520, we'll go over to Apple in a few minutes. J.P. Morgan Chase was down 50, we had Delta Airlines off 24, Morgan Stanley was down 60 cents. Let's go over to good old Apple and see what's happening with Apple. Apple came out with numbers uh, last week, uh, they were huge numbers, no doubt. Uh, Apple is... The high that we had out there with some juice in the last week was 396.27. And, you know, bottom line is it's still up there and still up there with uh, some juice. We go over to Google. You take a look at Google. What we've had with issues. What we've had with Google, uh, Google uh, come, out with, come out with numbers. That's when Google had gone topside from, uh, it closed at 526 on the 14th of July. Opens the next day at... 597. Now, what Google would you have, no doubt, that gap is going to get filled. Now, the real question is, when does that get filled? The only time a gap like this doesn't get filled is if it gets taken over, and I can't picture someone else someone else taking Google over. 
So if you're all hot and bothered about Google, just let it be a bit. You'll see that baby get filled, and then uh, you have to prepare yourself before the fact of that getting filled. Because you can imagine, Google at 625, that baby gets filled. You're talking about $100 down, and you're talking about, okay, what can make that happen, meaning go 100 bucks down the other side. Particularly because what you have with Google is that when you bring this back, you can make the case that the consolidation on Google is a monster also. 622 on the top side, and you get 484 on the bottom side, with gaps all over the place. And something to understand, folks, is that when you do have gaps all over the place, meaning you gap up and you gap down, that is consistent with a consolidation. That's what consolidations like to do. Now, the size of this consolidation uh, is, is huge, no doubt. We're going to take a look at uh, Amazon. Amazon's trading out there at uh, 213. And, uh, you know, Amazon can pull back to about the 197, but Amazon has some uh, good juice inside it. Now, let's go over and we take a look at the banking sector. We take a look at the XLF. Uh, the XLF out here is at $15.21. And what you have out here is this. Uh, you know, last week when I was on vacation, you had a small sign of strength inside the XLF, which was on the 21st, which was Thursday. So, how the XLF pulls back into the area of approximately uh, 1496 to 1460 is going to say flat out, is it making its way off that bottom? That's the way that's set up. If we actually take a look at some of the higher weightings inside the, the XLF, uh, JP Morgan would be the first one. That's the largest weighting inside it. And the way that JP Morgan is set up, it looks like it has broken the downtrend that it has been in since February 16th. You know, February 16th, the trading out there at 48, it goes down as low as 38, 20%, not the end of the world. Um, had a sign of strength last Thursday. It has another sign of strength out there on July 14th. And how you back into the 4135 to 4062 area will absolutely be huge. Overseas last night, you had Shanghai absolutely getting taken apart. Shanghai was down uh, 3%. That level there in Shanghai, folks, uh, tonight's going to be uh, important. This is why. Shanghai hasn't been able to get out of its way. Shanghai also had an expansion of volume last night big time. He did 11 billion shares uh, where it was go doing uh, 8 billion before. Shanghai is going to go after these lows. It's going to go after that 2648 level which is only 40 bucks down. You break that level, and that's, that's, um, uh, that's, that's a huge number. So uh, Shanghai is a big heads up. If we take a look at the FTSE, and London out here today, uh, what you had with the FTSE uh, is that uh, that was a flat market, down nine, flat market, though. And in that context, it's important to understand that the whole uh, you know, press corps was saying that, yeah, the market was going to fall apart last night if, in fact, uh, all these politicians uh, were not going to take any responsibility. Of course, we know that they're not going to take any responsibility whatsoever. This is Tom O'Brien, this is TFNN. Give us a call, folks. We're coming right back.